Hi guys, as you can see I've got GTA on, I haven't actually started playing on it yet, I've just turned it on ready, so it's just sort of idling. Um, well it definitely wasn't a boring day today, we took Mum's car to the MOT test station, of her choosing, we left it there, walked into town, Walked around the charity shops, you know, seeing what we could find. Uh, we had a little look at QDs. Yeah, Mum went to have to a hair appointment and had her hair done. I came back here and had something to eat because I hadn't eaten. And took the pills. Got got a taxi back to the industrial estate to the um, test station. Mum's back was playing up, only to find <laughs> that I didn't actually test the car because, and I thought he was just you know yanking our chains. Um, it wasn't, <laughs> but uh, I put it in, put it on the lift, raised it up, start the engine. I suppose I start the engine before they raised it up, otherwise it wouldn't bloody reach, wouldn't they? Um, and I'd started the test, I presume they turned all the lights on to check those. And, uh, oh yeah, they hadn't actually raised it yet. Um, but as soon as, while he was looking under the hood, there was smoke started to, um, pile out of the dashboard, so obviously then, while he was under the hood, he just yanked the battery terminals off, and uh, I had to push it out of the um, test station and at the, in at the yard. Um, but, uh, he did reconnect the battery for us, and we did drive it back here, with no further smoke, thankfully, but uh, when we got it here, I did have a look. Because on the way back, Mum said she's got a light on the dashboard. I looked over and I could see it was the fog light um, indicator light to tell you or remind you you've got your fog lights on. This little yellow light that comes on in the, in the um, dash cluster. <laughs> and it wouldn't go off. And at that point, I actually figured out what it was that um, went tits up. So when we got back here, I jumped out, I went round to the driver's side, pulled a little drop-down storage compartment out, and <laughs> I was right. The fuse I replaced in the fog light, rear fog lamp, had pretty much burst into flames and melted itself into the fuse box. There's no way that's coming out of there. In fact, when I put the plaz on it to pull it out, I pulled the top half out, the plastic, and that was it. The rest of it is just welded into the fuse box. Um, but I knew it was shortened out because that light was on on the dashboard, so I had to pick around in there and try and get hold of a, at least one of the spade connectors that plugs into the fuse box. I did, and I pulled one of those out to um, disconnect it so it shouldn't short out any more. What caused it to do it? I haven't got a bloody clue. But, um, so I, when we were on Sainsbury's, just to set my mind at ease, I probably wouldn't have made any difference, but just to set my mind at ease, I got under the back of the car, put my hand up to get to the fog lamp. I um, took the lamp holder out and pulled the plug off the back of the lamp holder and threw it in the back of the car just to make sure there isn't no like um, a short that end. I don't think there is because all the contacts were pretty clean and I couldn't see no damaged wires when I was trying to find out why it wasn't working on Sunday. <clears throat> um, and before anyone says anything, I did replace it with the correct fuse, a 10 amp fuse. Seems quite a lot for a light, but it's a 21 watt light, but that's what was in there when I pulled the blown one out. And the one I pulled out that was blown 
It didn't show any signs that it was under any extreme stress. You know, the fuse wasn't black or anything. That was just the break in the wire like there should be. And that was it. There was no indication that there was some huge short out fault or anything. So naturally, I just thought, hmm, pulled out, put the fuse in. And it worked, because I checked it. It was working fine. So I don't know what happened there. It shorted for some reason and drew so much current through the fuse that the fuse probably didn't pop and that's why I just set it on fire. Maybe the fuse was shit that I put in there, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't want to think about that because then I feel guilty because <laughs> I'm thinking I should have left it. But if I left it, it would have failed MOT anyway. Well, the car would have failed MOT anyway because he said when he popped the hood he could see corrosion under the bonnet, so I don't know where. I know where there is a little, but I thought that was surface myself, nothing to worry about, but if it's that he was referring to, then there might have been something to worry about. It's on top of the um, strut mounts. Yeah, not a good place to get rock. But, uh, yeah, he said it would have failed anyway on that. Um, he didn't charge for the MOT. I suppose it's fair, as he couldn't actually carry out the test. It's not fair to charge, is it? Um, so she's without a car, because it's not legal to drive. Not legal to drive a car on the roads over here without an, a um, valid MOT test. Even though the MOT test is only for the day you go in. Because um, I think people forget that you have to maintain your cars, even if it has got an MOT. A lot of people don't. They wait until the last sort of month when it's, the MOT is getting closer, then they decide to do the repairs. But you see, the thing is, even if your car's got a valid MOT, you know, it's every 12 months you have to have the test. So even if you've had one like, I don't know, three months ago and you've got a defective tyre on your car, for example, or a light out, headlight out, brake light out, the cops can still pull you and ticket you for it because you are meant to keep your vehicle in a roadworthy condition. <coughs> there is certain things an MOT tester might put through as an advisory if it's sort of something that's... Uh, not quite a failure, but not in good condition either, then it might be put down as an advisor, like brake pipes. If they've started to just show corrosion or something, then they might put it down as an advisory to get it done before the next MOT. Uh, I bet if I leave that long enough, that screen will come back on by itself. Because I've let it go like that, and I've been playing GTA merrily for half an hour or so, then all of a sudden, that will come back on by itself. <sighs> so yeah, delightful day. <laughs> um, I sold that Saracen. He offered me 25 quid for it, so I took it. So it was the same offer I had waiting on eBay for me to review. Um, but as that offer came in, when I'd already arranged for this guy to come and have a look, I thought, I'll use that as plan B in case he says no. Then I can just go on eBay and accept the offer. Um, so I went and bought me another Lego set. I've got this one, the Police Pursuit. And if you think that one looks similar, that's because they are. But that one, I think, is two two or three years old, that one. And they've just done a modern, fresh version of it. I don't know why LEGO don't do modern, fresh versions of sets like this. Or like these. I mean, that set, like I said, is only two or three years old, and they've just released another version of it. Look at the refuse trucks. That one's from... 2007, I think. 
Then I've got the green one under there, which was either last year or the year before. And then I've got this year's there. It's another one, you know, they've redone. I don't know why they... Well, it's good that they do different designs of them, I suppose, but... The only difference between these two sets is the actual design of the vehicles. I mean, they've gone for, well, in my opinion, that's a bit more of a, 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 more of a. Got carried away with the more of a there. This one is more of a, um, bad guy looking truck. It just looks more bad. That one just looks like a box standard truck to me. You know what I mean, this looks like the sort of vehicle a bad guy would drive. Um, and a sportier police car. That's basically a standard police car. And you've got the nice. Uh, oh, my voice went really high pitched there. <laughs> and you've got the standard sporty one. Anyway, I'm talking about Lego on a non Lego channel. That won't do. I keep, sorry, I keep slipping into doing that, don't I? I have to slap my wrists. <laughs> um, I did the Claude Butler. I can't remember if I filmed it with this one or that one. This one, I think. And I do believe that footage is on there, so I'll do a separate video of that. Because um, I decided to start the vlog again, so. But it's got the um, front forks in from the giant I bought. They went in pretty smoothly, actually. And I changed the top bear and cone as well. Oh, yeah, it's not a cup, it's more like a cone. And uh, it actually went to, together a lot better, so. And because the steerer tube is a lot taller than my old pair, I've got higher handlebars, which is a more comfortable riding position for me. Uh, I swapped the wheels. I've got my wheels down there. Which I am actually tempted to put back in, to be honest. Um, but these disc rotors on these ones, brake discs, seem to work better than the ones I've got on the other wheels I put in. Eh, I might leave them as they are, I might get used to them, or I might change them. I don't know. Decisions, decisions. If I change them, I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, so I've still got kids' bike for sale in the bedroom, and I've got the ladies' mountain bike, and I've got the big BMX out on the landing to do. Which just needs a tube, a tube and a clean, really. And if I want to, I could just go over the handlebars with some black paint or something, and the pedals just to smarten up a bit more. Uh, even though I'm only going to ask the tenor for it, so... Well, I'll put it up at 15 or near offer. I wouldn't take any less than a tenor for it. <sighs> I don't know if I want to play any GTA now. Besides, the cat has pinched my seat again. Now, uh, someone said it was snowing earlier, but I haven't seen any, and it doesn't look like it outside. I don't know, there might be a little bit of white on the roof over there. The wind is, wind is picked up. I missed the bloody handle of the G-Tech, I'm trying to lean on it like <laughs> If I play GTA, I'm only going to blow shit up anyway. A bit of stress relief, I suppose. See how long I can last before my character dies. Usually I play on Trevor. I might go down to the beach and go kill a few gang members that hang out down there. See if I can kill them before they kill me. Okay. 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. I've got a slow day tomorrow. Can't go at Mum's because there ain't no car. Well, there is, but it's not legal to drive, and there's no MOT. The cops will confiscate the car anyway. But, uh, what they're going to do, they're going to try and sell it as spares or repairs. Because it is fixable. For someone that either knows what they're doing or wants a little project. Um... I mean, there's a few options with that fuse box. Obviously, the fog light's got to work for the MOT. So, what they could do is uh, get under there somehow. I think the only way you can do it is to take the, dash, the whole dash panel out. Um, and uh, wire the fog light into one of the spare few sockets, because there's always a spare one in a car for some reason. Or a spare couple, I suppose it depends on the model and depends what extras it's got. Um, obviously find the fault as well so it doesn't do it again. Or replace the whole fuse box, which is one hell of a job. I don't fancy that. Um, and if you can't do vehicle electrics yourself, that's going to be a bloody expensive job. That alone would probably cost more than what the car's worth. Or, I disconnect the fog light from that fuse box altogether, and um, I could use the existing fog light switch and just wire in an inline fuse. Because you can get the inline fuse holes, they could just wire that in there. That would probably, probably be the easiest and cheapest option. But again, before they put the fuse in and make it work, they'd have to make sure they've found the fault and fixed that as well. I think it's possible a mouse may have got under there and chewed a wire. And the reason I say that, well actually there's two reasons why I suspect that. One, they live on a farm. Well it was a pig farm, it's not, a, it's not an operational farm anymore. Um, and two, the landlord, that also lives on the same site, in fact, right next door, has had mice in his car and they chewed the wires to the electric lock on the tailgate of his car, on the hatch, because he's got a little Peugeot hatchback. <laughs> so, it's possible. Might not be that, but it is possible. Um, I did wonder if I'd swapped it for a dodgy fuse without realising but I can't see how a fuse can be dodgy. Just like I said, when I took the blue one out, I couldn't see no indication that there was a, a massive fault that caused it to pop in the first place. It just looked like that popped under normal stresses. You know, with a little bit of extra current and pop. There was no blackening of the fuse. It wasn't melted. It wasn't... Oh, but the mess that's in there now, you never get that out because it's melted the actual plastic around the fuse socket as well. Only on that one so everything else is fine. It probably wouldn't have been if they didn't, you know, pull the wire off the battery as fast as they did, so you know, good job on the boys for doing that. They are pretty they are pretty good at Mark One, I'll give them that that credit. You know, I like to give credit where it's due, and they are pretty good. Uh, but the other thing is, he did mention when he was looking under the bonnet, because obviously they check for corrosion, not surface rust, actual rot. And uh, he did say there was some under there, and the only place I can think of that I know of was on the tops of the struts. But uh, I thought that was just surface, to be honest. Which is why I never really paid that much attention, but I could have been wrong. Or there was some more there that I hadn't noticed. And, uh, it'll need two new tyres. One is below the legal tread, because I did the 20 pence check on the inside tread. And the other side, at the back, these are both the back tyres, by the way, 
is yet close. I personally would feel better with two good, you know, a matching pair of tyres on the back. I mean, they all said put the spare on, but I'm thinking, yeah, but then you'll have three good tyres and one dodgy one. You're going to have dodgy grip on the road as well, that's not going to be safe. I'd r I would feel a lot safer if it was my car to have both the rears done with new tyres. <coughs> anyway. It, it's fixable, you know, if someone wants to, it's fixable, but is it worth it for like a 15, 16 year old car? But, uh, most, 99% of the bodywork is actually in good condition, it's not rotten, apart from that bit I know of underneath the bonnet, which you could, if you're really good, fix. Or if you wanted to cheat, you could hide it. Because <laughs> what the MOT tester can't see won't hurt. It'll just hurt you if it fails afterwards. If they stretch give way, that'll hurt. But, uh, yeah, so they're going to try it on Gumtree, eBay, Facebook groups. There is a Pajero pin in Facebook group that they could try it on. Personally, I think it might be their best bet because uh, I've heard lots of friends swear at eBay because there's so many time wasters on it and idiots. Well, I'm not really keen on using it myself. Oh shit, think about that. I better take that bike off Gumtree. Otherwise, I might get people messaging me. Will you take such and such for the bike? And nearly everyone that's made me an offer has offered 25 quid for it, so. That was probably going to be the most I'd have gotten for that, because it wasn't the best bike. It wasn't the worst. Not road fine, but... It, well, I suppose... I say it wasn't the best bike, because I just didn't like it. I'd much rather have that creamy-coloured giant done up. You never know, I might be able to find a way to put gears on it. Right. So I'm just going to... I might find the Gumtree link. I think my friend is right. I really need to organise my um, bookmarks. <laughs> Ooh, Gumtree's been changed. Right, so I can delete this. Was your ad successful? Yes, it was. So I sold it through Gumtree. I have, I've already removed it from eBay. I haven't got to deal with that. We've done that one already. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, oh, it looks like our town council might be moving into a temporary accommodation, but um, still bad than nothing. Because <laughs> um, it was in the paper today in the EDP. Oh, no, sorry, North Norfolk News, so I misread it. I'm getting tired. <laughs> um, well, I was actually told a week ago by someone, a reliable source, that the town council could have moved out last September, but they stayed, you know, protesting their user rights, which the NNDC agreed on. Right, and NDC North Norfolk District Council. Um, but um, what they could have moved to in September was in the old registry office. I think it's there's like a couple of rooms the registry office was going to rent to them, and I know I think one was the wedding room as a chamber. Um, but I think the idea was, or well, the way I understand it now, is that they were going to stick and hope the NNDC was going to find them a permanent home first. 
so they didn't have to move twice which makes sense in a way you know because otherwise it's double the moving costs because they'd have they'll have to hire a van again and if this is temporary accommodation they're going to have to hire storage for all the town's records and everything that's in the current office and all the town lights around the corner from me the Christmas lights and whatnot would all have to be put into storage so <laughs> I could see that looking at it that way because I was discussing with a friend on Facebook through private message as well you know I suppose they were hoping that they could get the NNDC to find them a permanent home but NNDC made a final offer on a site across town, which I've mentioned before, and again the NHS declined it. So they're not going to be getting that site. It's basically, our lovely North Norfolk District Council don't want to cough up the fucking cash. Pardon the language, but that is true. They just don't. If that was Chroma, on the other hand, now don't get me wrong, I love Chroma as a town. My mum doesn't, but we all have our own likes and dislikes, that's not a problem. <laughs> but, um, actually I actually think another friend of mine on Facebook doesn't like uh, Chroma either. I do. I think it's got some lovely buildings. I think it's the fact that I wasn't as bored living in Chroma as I am here, because they've got the arcades in Chroma. I used to save up all my two pences, and I'd go in there for a couple of hours, wasting them in there. <laughs> winning stupid th toys and things on the penny pushers or the 2p pushers but uh, yeah the NNDC seems to spend all their money or want to spend their money on these seaside towns because of course they're the tourist attractions that's what brings them in the money stupid little towns like North Walsham or Stalham that's just up the road we get shit <laughs> We get shit all. We get shit on by them, basically, and everything is shit, you know. And then DC just doesn't want to friggin' know. And uh, the, one of the reasons I don't like it is because I don't think it's fair. I do like to be as fair as I can, and I do believe in being fair. I strongly believe in being fair. And uh, that's one thing the NNDC is not. Well, actually, I could rant about that. I could actually make a whole hour-long video, probably ranting about the NNDC, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Uh, it is what it is, though. So, not much we can do. But apparently, they're going to move. Although it could be up to two to three years before Weatherspoons actually open in town. Because apparently they don't hurry with things like that. Um, which is what I was actually told last year as well, that Weatherspoons wanted to build on the whole land outside, because the whole car park and whatnot out here comes with it. That's all part of the same plot of land. So those old buildings here, which are currently used for storage, will be demolished. The temporary buildings for the citizens' advice will be demolished. And uh, there was actually my neighbour below me that said Weatherspoons wanted to uh, build on the whole plot, not leaving any parking space for staff and whatnot. Now, I can't see Weatherspoons doing that. Um, and as far as I know, they haven't put in for planning application yet anyway, so I don't know how he'd even know that. Uh, I'm sure if it was, someone would have found it and posted it on one of the town's groups by now. Um, but as far as I'm, I know, at least, they haven't put in for planning permission. But anyway, it's good news either way. It's an annoyance for the town council, because uh, they've probably got to move again in the future, at some point in the future at least. Who knows when? How long have I been rambling on for? Ooh, almost the half an hour mark. Alright then. Because I'm using the old camera for this. I've actually decided I'm going to use this 
old um, camera for the vlogs, just for the straight vlogs like this where I ramble and I'm not really doing anything constructive, and I'll use the other one when I'm doing something constructive. Just because it can see detail a bit clearer. Oh, me. So, uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to mention. I think that was it. That's, that's been my day. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, that's basically funny. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. I'm not forcing you. <laughs> and uh, I always do that with my thumbs up. Like and subscribe, view. I've got one on tonight. Yeah. So, uh, guess I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.